I'm at a gypsy. It was just so daunting for me because I was this young girl who didn't have a lot of experience who walked into this production room and you look around and there's, you know, Mark Beretta and there's Mark Scaife and there's Neil Crompton and there was like Tom Williams was working with us at the time and, you know, Larko, like, and there's all these people who are at the top of their game, you know, from, you know, whether it be racing or from television and I'm just sitting there looking around And they like, have, like, legitimate yeah, reason to Yeah, exactly. Be there. And yeah. I, I'm sitting around going, well, what the fuck am I doing here? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. You know. Imposter syndrome. Yeah, exactly. And then, you know, at the time, I suppose Instagram wasn't as sort of strong as what it is now, which fortunately, but Facebook was, you know, all over it. And, and like, yeah, like some of the comments I used to read. And then, you, yeah, like you said, you've got to rock back up, you know, a couple of weeks later and, and do the same thing again. And and it's playing on your mind. Okay, well, don't say that because you sound like a dickhead last time, but then you know, yeah. make it so you say it like this. And and yeah, that took a that took a while for me to really feel comfortable. And look, I'm still don't, you know, still now. And I'm like, what, 15 years later, like I still don't finish the day and be like, oh, okay, God, you know, was what Killed stupid, it. yeah, what yeah. stupid thing did I say today? Yeah. Um, but you just get better with dealing, with, dealing with it, with it and yeah. you get better at like being able to, you know, if you see a bad comment online, you know, you just you can handle it um, better than what I used to be able to handle it. Yeah, that that is hard, and that's definitely a skill to learn. I think. The first time I really had to deal with that was 2018 with the Chad Reed podcast because mm-hmm. it was on such a big platform, a yeah. different level <laughs> yeah. to what it was before. He'd never done one before, and it was a few hours and whatever. Mm-hmm. And man, I got fucking hammered for the first for the first <laughs> yeah. time. And it's hard when it's a organic, slow. You know, we yeah. were doing pretty, we were doing good enough to get Chad yeah, on yeah. the podcast. Like he wasn't a friend of mine. Yeah, yeah. You know, he wanted to come on, mm-hmm. so we'd sort of been doing good enough. But to just be exposed to mm. essentially the entire industry yeah. and, you know, that was the show that like Casey and Ricardo and like all, everyone started listening mm-hmm. to from from that point. But I got fucking hammered and I had no way of knowing yeah. and I wasn't from this world. I was just a dude that was like producing my own little yep. thing. And then all of a sudden you've just got – there's one – one video on YouTube that probably has no shit 3,000 comments like saying I'm a dickhead basically <laughs> and I was just like I shouldn't have wow. laughed and that's not funny but <laughs> no, it's, it is funny but, in a way but yeah I, I, to, I hear you to deal with that though, I was just like fuck this is hectic yeah and and I think now like the world we live in right now 2022 the the online criticism is is outrageous and and sometimes supercars like, it's now yeah and sometimes like you know sometimes it's 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 proper threats like it's death threats it's like threats of abuse physical abuse that sort of stuff and and I don't know like we're in a position we like we need to have change and there's some stuff going on with with what Aaron Mullen's been doing with with trolling and that sort of stuff but we're currently in this position where the online space is so dangerous it's so good but it's also so dangerous and we can't keep living like this. Like there needs to be change. Because it is gnarly in F uh, in V eight or supercars, right? Yeah. Like because I sort of hear it mostly through Ains and yep. and Maddie. Um, but it actually is quite quite bad. I I I don't know that I have ever experienced yeah. the level of what yeah. goes on in that world. Why Why is it so bad Look, in that area? Do you I think? don't know if it's like supercars. I think a lot of sport probably would say that, that it's really probably bad for them true. as well. Yeah. I think it's just we're so like that's the industry that we are, you know, immersed in. But, um, you know, and Chaz, like Chazzy Mostert, he's doing some really good stuff with, with what he's trying to get out there with, you know, the no social hate hashtag and what he's doing he for Dolly's it, dream. Eh? Yeah. yeah. But I, I remember it was like Adelaide 500 a few years ago and um, Rick Kelly had an incident in, in pit lane yeah. where he, he crashed. And I, I, I interviewed him sort of in the heat of the moment and I can't remember my exact words, but whatever I said to him, uh, his answer was kind of like, I suppose seen as controversial or something like that. And he got slammed. Like he got like serious, serious hate and it was threats and like death threats and threats to his family and his son and, and all that sort of stuff. And it, sh- it like it knocked me for six because I was like, I'm the person who put the microphone in mm. his face that led to him saying what he said and therefore led to like, and I really took that quite personally, hard yeah. and quite personally. And, and, it, and it, I really struggled to to navigate how well, this is my job as a reporter as a presenter is to get the information but I need to ensure that I'm you doing it, it yeah, exactly yeah. yeah and I don't want to put anyone under the bus and and it was a real 
difficult time for me to just like work out well hang on a second like how do I do this like how do I ask the right question that gets the the response I want without like ensuring that you know ensuring that they're still protected in a way and and I in had some you know again I was lucky I had good people around me who sort of got me through that and and it probably sounds dramatic to someone but it but it's a sense of responsibility yeah, because of, care, of, yeah. of what's of what's going out there you know and um and and yeah we're in this position now where like it doesn't matter what people say people are going to be annoyed like you know you're going to please everyone which is a supposed thing you've got to get um yeah comfortable with yeah but then things happen on the weekend like just recently in perth um when we were one and there was a controversial moment between him and cam waters and the the threats of abuse and again death threats and like I was getting threatened on my DMs because I'm Will's wife and I'm like I what am I got to do with any of this you know and and but stuff like that is so like it's disgusting it's yeah. gross that you know someone like myself or even fans of mine sent me messages saying oh we just sent Will a congratulations and we're now getting slammed online because we're on his side type thing or whatever it may be and that's the stuff we need to get rid of like mm. that is you can be passionate about your team and passionate about a sport but threat you know threatening violence or threatening you know abuse and all that sort of stuff and, and personal threats is is just there is absolutely no excuse for any of that yeah and that's the weird thing is that it's just a game essentially you know yeah, like that correct. we're just here watching yeah uh oi Reigns. can you get griff to turn that ac on yeah, and close like events super hard in here yeah start to heat up <laughs> yeah get him to make it cold too if, if possible <laughs> yeah the this studio is extremely soundproof mm. but it's also extremely no, there's no airflow <laughs> and we've got like, the, like a, a we, sauna yeah we got the we got like this soundproof box that comes from the aircon mm. but with the way the vents work it just it doesn't work properly yeah. it's like the one thing that's wrong with this <laughs> with this studio and then as soon as you have it cold enough to have the studio nice yeah. out there it's just like an igloo oh, really? and everyone's in like <laughs> ski jackets and shit we can't get it right yeah um yeah, yeah i think you've got on the one side, you've got these fans that are passionate enough to care. Yeah, and we want that. We which want, you want, yeah. but there's a line yeah. where you're like, okay, you've gone from passionate to weirdo. Yeah. Let's have less weirdo yeah, yeah. and more passionate. Yeah, yeah. And, and it's hard to get that balance. Yeah, and look, I um, just when I was on SAS last year, um, that sort of opened me up to a whole new audience as well because mm. most of my career has been a pretty specific audience. It's been a motorsport-based audience. And then, you know, I did SAS and then all of a sudden you're on a on a primetime sort of television show, at, um, you know, on a mainstream network. And so you've got all these other people who are now, you know, introduced to you. And there was a couple of episodes um, where, you know, like I looked at some of the comments on like TikTok and stuff and I was just like holy shit like this is next level like next level you know just how can you be so angry at someone or hate someone eh? who you've never met and you've seen them for like what 10 minutes on a television show like it's it's blows my mind that people can be so incensed and so like have so much rage against you that they've never met you like it's because i i just don't understand it i think that's my ultimate position as well on it is that I actually don't have any friends in my life that would leave a YouTube comment or a TikTok yeah. comment in that way. Yeah. So I sort of, I care about the people that are like my friends, essentially. Yep. They're good morals. Yep. They're you know, good people. If they think I'm a dickhead and they want to say it to me, they're not going to leave a comment on YouTube or my Instagram. Mm. They're going to talk to me. And so it's like, I just, I guess I figured out that I can't take stock yeah. in what those people kind of say and i also think it's nice when you reach a point um on your instagram or your tiktok where you actually can't keep up with the comments yeah so you just don't go there anymore because it's not like a place that you can have any kind of legitimate discourse like there used to be a way on instagram where if i commented and someone replied i'd see that reply and i could Mm. you could sort of have a conversation yeah and now we just we just don't have that yeah so and and I think, and then people ask me this all the time, like, how do you deal with the trolls and the negative comments? And I think you're always, I don't, I'd struggle to believe you if you said you'll never, ever, 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 like, care. Like, I think everyone always has an element of, oh, that was, that's pretty rude. Or like, I don't know, that's, you know, like that sort of 
cut you know deep a little yeah. bit um, well, yeah that's that <laughs> i think my take on it is sorry cut you off that's the, right. the stuff that has a bit of truth in it yeah that's the shit that yeah, hurts that, that so hurts. they're the comments that you read and they actually affect yeah. you when there is a bit of truth like yeah. Ah, I was a bit of a dickhead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would, yeah you're right. Yeah. The, the ones where you like fair play, they're the ones that yeah. get you up. But, but what upsets me, or what upset me, particularly last year, um, I had a couple of trolls, that's what they are, um, and they were saying stuff about my family. And um, when my dad passed away, I had a particular person who was like commenting on all of my photos and on, on my family's photos as well. And I was like, look, I put my life on Instagram and I, I put, you know, what I want out there and I'm comfortable with that, but do not dare touch my family and like, do not bring yeah, them into yeah. this. They didn't choose this. Yeah. They didn't choose to be, you know, part of a public life. I did. So that's like, that seriously crossed a line for me. And, you know, that's, it was just, there was absolutely no excuse for anything like that. If you enjoyed this content, please like and subscribe. And to listen to the full three-hour podcast, search Gypsy Tales in your favorite podcast platform or click the link in the description below. Gypsy Gang.